Welcome to r slash today I effed up, where OP gets caught sniffing the panties of his friend's older sister. Today I effed up when my friend caught me sniffing his older sister's panties. I was chilling at my friend's house and we both got hungry so we decided to order some food. His parents don't allow us to order food ourselves because apparently we're not old enough. We're 15. So we had to do it through a sister who's 18. So she ordered the food and everything, and it was pickup, so she went to go pick up the food in her car while we stayed at home playing games. I had to go to the toilet, and the only free one was the upstairs one. Now, when I went to the bathroom, I noticed the laundry basket was in the bathroom, but it's supposed to be outside, so when I left, I took it with me. I walked outside with it and accidentally dropped it, and when I scrambled to pick it all up, I saw some panties. Me, being me, grabbed them and inspected them, thinking... Do these panties belong to my friend's mom or my friend's sister? And I thought, whatever, and started sniffing them. I didn't even realize at this point that my friend was coming upstairs to check why I was taking so long, and when I looked up, my jaw dropped. The next five minutes, we just stood in silence, and eventually, he just walked downstairs. He got so mad, and I apologized for so long, but I made him promise that he wouldn't tell his mom or his sister and keep this between us. Now, the secret still remains with him, but that was a horrible day for me. We haven't talked about it much, but I'd rather forget about it. So, <laughs> what's so funny about this post is in the title, Today I effed up when my friend caught me sniffing his elder sister's panties, he censors the word sniffing. Dude, stop pretending like you're not a horn dog when clearly you're a horn dog. Today I effed up when I found a three carat diamond on the street and I just gave it to the nearest NYPD officer. I was walking in New York City near the Diamond District and I saw an envelope fall out of someone's pocket. I went to pick it up and return it, but the original owner had slipped away. The envelope was small, about half the size of an index card, but thick, and it had a jeweler's name on it, so I opened it, and there was a handwritten receipt for a 2.7 carat diamond. Hold on, let's do a price check on this real quick. 2.7 carat diamonds can cost anywhere from $10,000 to $70,000, depending on the shape, color, clarity, and other factors. Okay, so this is a lot of money we're talking about. There were a few other papers folded up inside, and sure enough, one of them felt a bit lumpy, and I opened it to reveal a stunning loose diamond. Instead of being elated by my find, I panicked. I wanted this thing out of my possession as soon as possible. I wanted nothing to do with the consequences of which there could have been many. Organized crime, getting arrested, my mind was racing all over the place. The envelope had a phone number of a local diamond business on it. I probably should have called that, but then I realized I had no way of knowing if they'd owned it, or maybe they'd sold it and it was dropped by a customer. I found two cops on 47th Street and I just gave it to them. They asked a few questions about how it came into my possession and I went on my way. I now feel like a schmuck for giving it to the cops on the street. They're probably just keeping it for themselves. One of them said that it was worth over $40,000. I couldn't keep it in good conscience, but at least I should have either called a lawyer, called the number on the envelope, or walked to the precinct to submit a finder's claim in case the owner was never found. So, yeah, I just handed over $40,000 to a cop. And then OP posted an update. The owner's been found! I took the advice of many commenters and I reached out to the precinct. The officer who answered the phone knew exactly who I was, and he told me that the two cops brought back the stone. Not only that, the rightful owner came by the precinct last evening and described the stone in complete detail. As other posters mentioned, the vast majority of NYPD officers are honorable, and I'm sorry to have doubted you. Also, down in the comments, Super X points out something interesting that I never knew about. The Internal Affairs Bureau of NYPD runs sting operations against their own cops fairly often. They'll literally have some undercover agent walk up to a beat cop and go, hey, I found this wallet with a hundred bucks. And then they'll jam up the cop if they don't report it. So while this isn't a hundred percent the same thing, if you plainly walked up to a patrol cop and handed him an expensive looking diamond, there's a fair chance that he would report it. Also, the Reddit user Geomancer points out, did you know that these days a lot of diamonds have microscopic serial numbers etched into them? both to prevent pawning after theft and to prove their origin is from an ethical source. 
If you tried to sell it, you could have landed in hot water. Of course, not all diamonds do, but it's entirely possible. Also, down in the comments, we have this story from Bubby Limo. When I was 10, I was out riding bikes with my sister. We were crossing a busy intersection when something shiny caught my eye. It turned out to be a thick gold ring with a diamond in it, like a man's wedding band. We argued amongst ourselves what to do. Was it real? If so, it must be worth thousands. Can we sell it and split the money? Innocence prevailed. We showed our mom and we turned it into the cops. The cops filed a report and said that if it remained unclaimed for 30 days, we could come back to get it. We decided that if the adults took us seriously, it must be real. The countdown was on. About two weeks later, we stopped at a gas station after church and we saw a handwritten sign on the store window. Lost. Man's ring. Very sentimental. Reward if found. And it had a picture of the ring and a phone number. My mom told me to call the number. I was shy and terrified, but I let them know that I think I found the ring and which police station we gave it to. Two days later, the man came to our house to say thanks and gave us $50. He suspects what happened was he was doing car maintenance, took off his ring for whatever reason, set it on the car, and forgot about it. The intersection where I found the ring is where he turns left on his daily commute. The end. Today I effed up by doing a 69 and now I need a dental implant. This happened two months ago, but I'm still depressed over this. I hooked up with a woman who was on the thicker side and I stupidly suggested that we should do a 69. Why was it stupid? Because I had a root canal on my front tooth years ago and if you don't know, a root canal tooth without a crown is prone to fractures since it's very weak because the procedure effectively kills the tooth by removing the pulp which is what keeps the tooth strong and alive. A root canal tooth can easily break without a crown if it's under a lot of stress. <laughs> If it's under a lot of stress, like regular chewing. So what happened was, me and her get to it, and after several minutes of us enjoying it, she sat upright, which caused her to accidentally sit on my face, and the weight and pressure from her butt cracked my root canal tooth below the gum. Because of that, I now need to remove the tooth and pay around $6,000 for a dental implant, which is going to take 7 months for the whole procedure. And seven months without a front tooth is going to make me really insecure. Today I effed up by ruining my husband's relationship with his best friend. My husband and I, both 35, have been together for seven years, married for five. He has two older brothers who he's not particularly close with. The one person he is very close to is his cousin Aaron. They lived together after my husband graduated college. He was the best man at our wedding, and Aaron even lived with us for a year while we were married so that he could finish school. I like Aaron a lot. He's felt like a brother-in-law to me, much more than my actual in-laws have ever felt. My husband and I have had a rough three years. Because of COVID, there was a point where both of our fathers were in terrible health. We've also dealt with infertility issues, and sadly, in July, we had a stillbirth at 34 weeks pregnant. Aaron has been there for us through all of that. He's probably the person my husband can lean on the most for support. Last night, I got a call from Aaron's longtime girlfriend, Jennifer. She asked if it was okay if she could come over and have some girl talk with me. Jennifer and Aaron have been together for about as long as my husband and I have. She has three kids from a previous relationship, and we love them. They spend the night at our house, and her older kids dog sit for us. So she comes over, and she tells me about a serious problem she has with Aaron, and she's at a loss for what to do. The main issue is that Aaron has an insane amount of debt, and he's basically used her as a place to crash for seven years. He constantly criticizes her for her parenting, saying that she babies her teenage children. And finally, he lies about where he's going, and his locations have him at a massage place that does happy endings. I hate to say it, but I already vaguely knew about the financial issues and the parenting issues. Even my husband and I have called out Aaron about how he talks to the teenagers, but I had no idea just how bad it was. We talked about it, and I flat out asked Jennifer, if he's going to a massage parlor and getting happy endings behind your back, would you still stay with him? And she said yes. So I gave her some advice about boundaries and talking to him, and I left it at that. After she left, I went upstairs and told my husband what she said. 
My husband has a complete breakdown. He's in tears. I finally get him to talk, and he starts saying things like, Can I just have one person in my life that I can trust? I can't go to my brothers to talk, and now I can't trust Aaron because I know that he's doing this garbage. He's effing better than this. My husband is just completely and utterly destroyed. I feel terrible. I didn't even think about it when I told him what Jennifer said. I didn't even think that it could ruin their relationship. Aaron is the only person that my husband goes to for advice, and he really looks up to him as a big brother. And now, I just completely destroyed that image. I'm going with the classic, pretend it didn't happen technique this morning. But I just feel like I completely took away the one family member who my husband felt comfortable turning to for emotional support. What the F do I do? Uh, OP, it doesn't really sound like you messed up, it sounds like Aaron messed up. He's the one spending recklessly and not respecting his stepkids and cheating on his wife. And just because you discovered that information and consoled the girlfriend, that's your fault? Nah, it doesn't really work that way. Also, OP posted an update. We went out to dinner last night. I did apologize to him. Not exactly, I'm sorry I told you, more like, I'm sorry that happened. He said, you have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I'm pissed off at Aaron. I said, are you sure you aren't mad at me at all? My husband said, I'm about 1% mad at you because you probably shouldn't have told me after I ate my gummies. We take Delta 8 gummies at night to sleep. I guess he'd already taken a few by the time I came upstairs. I did tell him that there were more awful things Aaron has done that I didn't get a chance to tell him because he got so upset. I asked him if he wanted to know about that stuff too. To which he said, not now, maybe another night. After that, we enjoyed our steaks and chilled for the evening. I don't know what's going to happen moving forward. He's very insistent that he's not going to reach out to Aaron. And Aaron still has no idea Jennifer talked to us or that my husband knows about all the garbage that Aaron has done. You know, OP, honestly, I feel like this post is more like of a good thing than a bad thing because your husband had the correct reaction. You know, he's not defending Aaron. He's not saying, oh, the cheating's not a big deal. Oh, the debt's not a big deal. Which means he has a good heart. He's a good person. And he understands that Aaron is doing something wrong. And he's angry at Aaron, not at you. So, uh, honestly, this story makes it seem like your husband is a decent guy. Today I effed up by stalking my husband's Reddit account. When me and my husband met, and for the entire three years that we dated before we married, I was always firm about not wanting kids. My husband told me that his stance on kids was along the lines of, kind of undecided, but overall not a good idea. He always said that he used to want kids, but he changed his mind later in life. I wholeheartedly believed him until I decided to snoop on his account. We're both pretty avid Reddit users, and he wanted to brag to me about how many upvotes he got on one of his comments. I watched him as he clicked on his profile to find it, and I caught his username and a glimpse of another comment where it looked like he was talking about me. We've never tried hiding each other's accounts from one another, so it's not like his was secret, but I still feel a little bad for letting curiosity get the best of me. I looked up his username later in the day to check out what he'd said about me. To his credit, he was gushing about me, and it was really sweet. But quite a few of his other comments also talked about how he wishes he could have kids of his own and that the only thing stopping him is me. He talked about how his desire to be with me outmatched his desire to have kids, but he's still heartbroken that he can't have both. I don't know what to make of it. On the one hand, I'm hurt that in the almost 10 years we've been together, he's never talked to me about this. And instead, he lied to me to make it seem like we were on the same page. I feel immense guilt that I've taken such a choice away from him, especially after reading about just how badly he wants it. On the other hand, and I can't believe that I'm about to type this out, but it's making me rethink my stance. For the first time in my 32 years of existence, I'm uncertain about whether I want kids or not. I've always thought that pregnancy and birth sounds like a nightmare, and I simply don't have the mental bandwidth to devote all that time to raising a child. But suddenly, I'm having daydreams about it. Hell, just last night, I fell asleep while fantasizing about what would happen if my birth control failed and we decided to just roll with it instead of getting an abortion. Every argument I try to come up with against it is easily refuted by how our life is currently going. We own a house, we both have good jobs that pay well, and I work from home on my own schedule so I wouldn't have to worry about daycare or extended maternity leave. 
The fact that I'm even reconsidering is absolutely terrifying. What if I think about it for another year, decide to go for it, and then regret it? What if I'm only thinking about it now because I just want to make him happy? What if I decide to ignore these thoughts, and later I regret trying before we get too old? What if he thinks that he wants me now, but later resents me for not letting him live the life that he always wanted? OP, you and your husband desperately need to have a sit-down conversation. And, considering this post got almost 5,000 upvotes, you can say, Hey, hubby, check out this post I made that got 5,000 upvotes. That was our slash today I effed up, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.